I have told so few people that story. (laughs) But also kind of ingenious. Yes. We're here to talk about bread, lettuce, cheese, dead presidents, green. It's just money, man. It's just money. My tax story. We definitely didn't have a lot of margin. So pretty young, newlyweds. And I uh, had just lost money in the 2009 crash. I did not want debt. I would go a day and a half without eating if it meant I could get back to school and eat for free in the cafeteria because I'd already paid for it. If we were traveling for a soccer game and they gave us 10 bucks and I knew I could basically get back to food within like 12 hours, even after just playing in a game, by golly, I was pocketing that $10. I mean, I'd be shaking. I'm like dying. (laughs) I mean, it was pretty bad. I I did not want debt. However, when I was at college, I I learned about subsidized loans and unsubsidized loans. And the subsidized loan meant that they didn't charge you interest or the government paid the interest Mm -hmm. for you until you were out of school. Mm -hmm. So I had this bright idea and I jumped on the internet. I did some research and I found out that no time in all of U.S. history, if I had taken all my subsidized loans throughout my college career and put them in the most conservative mutual funds, that existed, could I lose money? (laughs) So I proceeded every semester to take 100% of my loans out and then go straight to the bank, give the check to the financial Mm -hmm. advisor at the bank and said, put me in the most conservative mutual funds that exist. So in December of 2008 and going into 2009, I go from having no college debt and I'm up five or six, seven thousand, eight thousand dollars. I mean, a ton to me. I'm like feeling like I'm the richest man in the world. I'm the smartest man in the world to losing like 25 grand or 20 grand. Just poof, it's gone because the economy tanked like 30 or 40 percent. Lost everything I'd made. Plus now all of a sudden I owed 15,000 or 20,000 dollars. Wow. You were leveraged. I was leveraged <laughs> and I didn't feel so smart anymore. And I felt so sick to my stomach. I bet. Oh. So this whole story is to then get to this next part where I desperately play the stock market. I'm like, it was so volatile. It was going everywhere. I was an idiot. I might as well have lost the other 15, but somehow in my mind, I felt, well, I already lost like half of it. So who cares if I lose the other half? (laughs) Or full tilt, baby. Put all my money on red. So somehow I decided to be a day trader. Somehow, miraculously in all of this, I actually trade my way back up to right where I was. I actually stayed in college for another three years to keep my subsidized loans. So I kept taking classes and I got another bachelor's degree because it was cheaper for me somehow in my mind. I don't know what I was doing. So then I had to spend two years getting the arts side because I had a bachelor's in science already or two bachelors in science. So then I was getting a third bachelor's in arts. So it, it took me like that much foreign language and stuff and like philosophy at JUCO, which only costs like 60 bucks in a credit right, hour. Right. So it was less money to pay to JUCO to get a third degree than it was to pay the interest on my student loans. But if you think about it, I had to pay the principal back too and right. the interest. Mm. Well, I didn't have the money to pay that or the right. principal. <laughs> so instead I kept the principal and I used it to earn the other money back and I would, you know, kept investing it, but I day traded my way back. So all <laughs> this, you actually did it. Yes, I did it. <laughs> So then wow. this brings Good. us to the tax, the tax question. Oh, you didn't get, you didn't think about paying your taxes. I don't know anything about taxes at this point. I definitely oh. don't have a master's in personal finance. I'm newly wed. We just got a house. I get a tax bill, $5,000, $3,000, $12,000. To me, it just felt like <laughs> I can't pay this. What I learned though, was there had been recent changes in the laws and they, they basically went back and said, Hey, give us all the trades that happened. Well, they didn't actually require like fidelities and the TD Ameritrades to report how much your, your basis was, how much your cost was. So basically they just said, Hey, he made lots of trades. And so they didn't care about losses. Well, I made and lost money left and right. I mean, I, it's not like I just made my money back and I was like the world's best investor it was like, <laughs> I made a thousand. I lost a thousand. I made 800. I lost 200. I made 600. I lost 1400. I mean, it was stupid. (laughs) And so all they had was all the times I sold and they just counted it all as income. And they sent me this huge tax bill for all the earnings. Uh, What happened was I almost like paid it all to find out. All I actually had to do was go show all of my costs, but you had to fill out all these forms and it was hard. It was confusing. And then it basically came out and showed I made nothing. And so I owed nothing. (laughs) I didn't know a tax bill. Wow. But they sent me a tax bill. Wow. And I didn't know what was happening. So I just thought, I must owe these taxes. So if they send you a tax bill. my roller coaster. (laughs) You don't always actually owe. I have told so few people that story. (laughs) It's embarrassing and kind of not embarrassing. Kind of amazing. And really embarrassing. 
all at the same time. <laughs> but also kind of ingenious. Yes, you, you, you actually say you came got out. three degrees or two and a half or whatever it is. We got on mat for having so much school. <laughs> <laughs> <You are. laughs> I, we got on mat for so much like smart school. Or something. He went to book smart school. You went to street yeah. smart school. Yeah, my wife was wrapping up her master's when I was like, well, I get my third bachelor's done. <laughs> Didn't have to pay that principal back of the student loans that I shouldn't have borrowed that I put into an account that no time in U.S. history ever should have done this to me, but it did. Wow, that totally just beat out my tax story. I, I don't even, I've, I've had three kids and gotten a lot of tax money back. That's about it. <laughs> What are ways that an employee can save on their taxes? You have kids, you buy property. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> this is just what I've heard yeah. lowers your taxes. Yeah. Is that true, Jerry? Historically speaking, having kids does, and it still kind of does, uh, but it's changed a lot just recently. But yeah, there used to be a personal exemption where for each kid you had, you got like a $4,000 credit or whatever. And plus then you got a child tax. So you would also get a net or Child Another tax. credit for like like a credit child tax oh, credit. Got it. Got you. Got Where you then <laughs> they tax in my children too. <laughs> <laughs> they tax in everybody. Hide your children. Hide your wife. <laughs> they tax in everybody up in here. Okay, so they gave you two things. If you had a kid before, you got to pretend you made less money, and on the money you did get taxed on, they gave you a credit, so you didn't have to pay it all. That's how it was before. Trump just said, "Listen, this is ridiculous. These are lots of rules." We're just going to make a much bigger standard deduction and get rid of some of it, which was just better. So you just automatically get these exemptions and like, we're not going to make people claim them and it's less, it's too confusing. So that's it now. So you do still get the child tax credit that got added back in. So it still lowers your taxes a little bit. So, you're However, this is really confusing because, you know, a kid also costs you way more money. No, than that's you what I was going to say. They're getting you to spend so much more money and taxing on the products oh, you yeah, buy, yeah. but you're getting this one credit for having this life. Something else. Here on It's Just Money, we, we, our disclaimer is we do not recommend having kids just to lower your taxes. <laughs> so what are, what are some tips that people who are employees can do to save money on their taxes? First and foremost, there's vehicles usually through work, and if not through work, because a lot of jobs don't necessarily have like a retirement plan. You can always do a traditional IRA, which is just a tax deferred vehicle, fancy words, an account you put your money in and the government won't tax you on it. Wait, but this is if you own, you're talking about if you own a business? Nope. No, as just an as employee. employee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, this is just as a person. Even if you own a business, you can do this. So me needing to drive to work and creates it as a no not rental. that kind of vehicle vehicle he means like a financial product oh yeah, so, yeah so it's, just like, English, it's like a bank account <laughs> i wondered if that might be confusing yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it's <laughs> just and I'm, I'm trying to add some of the language people use so that it's like oh i finally understand what that person was talking about the other day uh, when they okay. kept talking about tax deferred vehicles, vehicles. it's like so they, they, it's not mm, cars this is uh, just how people <laughs> throw stuff around i'm actually really glad you asked all right yeah, yeah what well, is confusing sure. i get I get confused. I mean, I literally had to study for five years to like begin to go, well, this just doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't come out of a master's and go, let me explain to you our tax system. Yeah. <laughs> this all makes sense now. I spent five to 10 years after the master's thinking I was maybe dumb. I had to get closer to my age before I started to realize like, maybe the system doesn't actually make a lot of, maybe it's just confusing. Maybe it's convoluted. Maybe this is complex gotten to become this thing. And so now we're all trying to understand how do we play on this playground? Cause this is, this is our lives. A playground with lots of rails and fences that block you. From and if you try to go outside of them, there's razor blades. Yeah. <laughs> fro you, know, like, you better pay your taxes. We're all tiptoeing right. on coal. One thing we can't do is not pay our tax. The government is very serious about getting its money. I have a theory that it's very simple. The English English language was created just to create tax rules. <laughs> I just made this theory up right now. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to go with it's true. <laughs> That's what they mean when they say tax deferred vehicles. They're just saying, here, put your money in this account. We approve this account. Keep your money in this account. You can now invest money in this account. If that money makes money, we won't tax it. Now we are going to tax this money once you take money out of this account. But the idea essence is that you take some of the money that you would have got taxed on and you put it in this account. And so you actually get all of it instead of losing 
you know, 20, 30% of it to taxes. Yep. It sits there over time. It makes more money as it's invested. And then in the future, you can take it out. You make a tax there, but you don't know what your tax rate will be when you're retired. It could be a lot less. So okay. I get it. Yep. tip two is actually more, it's, it's, it's really taking that conversation a little further. Mm-hmm. One, just because you put money in the account and save the taxes, it's not going to do you any good if it doesn't get invested. There's still a lot of people who will actually do this, but then they kind of like accidentally let two years go by or three years go by because they don't really know what to do with this money. Mm -hmm. But that time, the thing I preach all the time is time is your best friend because you're not losing three or four years now. What you lost was the final four years, the final three years of earnings because you gave up the first three years. And those years are the years where everything's accumulated and the more you've put in, the more it made, and the more money it makes, the more money you make on that money. It's all about time. Time, value, money. <laughs> the biggest thing I would say is make sure your money is getting invested. And uh, so, so save money, make sure it's, but then get, make sure it's, it's going into invested. something, not yeah. just going into an account. It's great that you save the taxes, but time is your friend. Make sure that money is now getting invested. Right, right. So if you're investing, though, there is risk, right? Absolutely. The younger you can get started, the better, because risk isn't very high if your time horizon is long. In other words, if I start putting money in and it loses some money, but I'm not going to need to touch this money for 30 years, it's not a big deal. It's a much bigger deal if I need the money tomorrow. Without risk, there is no reward. I've been Do told I trust that, this? Re- but like that, I lo- like I hate the one that says you got to spend money to make money. Sounds like I just made less money. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, that's not my life. That's not yeah, my yeah, life. No. You like, spend other people's money yeah, to, make, to money. make money. That's how you make money. <laughs> <laughs> there are times where that can hold true, but it is not a true statement. Gotcha. Okay. Right, right, right. Whoa, I didn't know that. So my question, going back to the employees, I've heard different theories on how to do your exemptions. Like everyone knows they have to fill out that form once a year or when they get hired of how many, to figure out how Mm. much money the government's going to take from you. The the, the less exemptions, so the government takes more so they don't owe anything at the end is Mm -hmm. one view. And there's the other view is like, well, I want them to take as little as possible so that I can keep the money, but I'll just be thoughtful to save some of it in case I do owe something because then I have the money. Government's holding that money for me interest-free versus I can hold that money and make a little, at least make a little interest on it. So there's those two perspectives. What do you, what do you guys think? So best case scenario is to just be zeroed out, right? Where you don't owe and you don't have to pay much. That, that's one perspective if you don't have to worry about saving the money. And uh, the other one is like, I, I want to do as little as possible, but be yeah. aware of what I owe. Okay. First and foremost, know yourself. For sure. I would argue that no person really gets served very well to overpay in taxes only to wait till the end of the year to get a refund. So like that feeling they get that they love Mm -hmm. is not worth it. I mean, I hear people like, they're like, I got a $4,000 refund. And I'm like, but you didn't even make 40 grand, like, (laughs) like 10% of like Mm -hmm. one, they were taking 10% of your money more than what you owed. Damn. And they're happy about their refund. I'm like, you didn't even need the credit card debt. You have accumulated a thousand dollars in interest this year. That's the good, that's a good point. Like, I didn't think about a percentage of what you're actually making, like your salary. You know, for yeah. forty grand, it's a you're lo- you're basically loaning the government money, and then you're paying interest because you don't have enough money, and then you get that money, and you're like, well, at least I could pay off that credit card. But you just could have also avoided all those. But then know yourself. If you're incapable, it is way better target zero, hit zero, than to pay as little as possible, not have the money, because the government's going to get their money. Look at your last year's tax return. See how much you paid in total income tax. And with our new W-4 system, where you can choose how much money is withheld in dollar figures rather than dependents, make sure you you try to hit zero or go over it a little bit if you need to, because you don't want to have to save and pay it later. But if you're comfortable and you put your money into a savings account that you know is going to taxes, Mm. or if you pay enough in taxes, you could actually use that money. You could buy CDs. So if I bought a CD at a bank that said, Hey, I'll give you You like a, like a music CD. Yeah. Go get a music CD. So (laughs) if I a certificate of deposit, so if I go to the (laughs) bank and they say, well, I'll give you 2% on your money. And you're like, well, I know I'm going to owe $4,000 at the end of this year. Cause I looked at my tax return from last year. I have that in my savings. Well, I'm going to pay as little in taxes as I can. I'm going to go to the bank, put this money away. They're going to give it back to me in a year, and they're going to pay me. I'm going to earn 2%. Wait, what? Yeah. Why? Because that's what a certificate of a deposit is. You loan the bank money, and then it's going to loan it to other people, and they pay you a part of that interest that they make. 
risk-free. Thank you for listening or watching It's Just Money. We hope you enjoyed the episode. If so, please subscribe so you don't miss out. Also, leave us a five-star review wherever you listen to podcasts. If you have any suggestions for future episodes, please comment below. But remember, it's just money.